He's got seven boards as well. Crowd getting on its feet. It's about a three and a half second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Brian turns, forces it up. Banker won't go. Tipped up and in. Lamar Odom with a strong first half. Final seconds. That'll count if it goes. Off the mark. And a dominant first half comes to an end. The Lakers by 20. And their bench a huge part of this first half explosion. And the Celtics go back to the locker room after getting out rebounded, out worked, and out hustled. 51 to 31. The Lakers in front. Kobe Bryant had 15 plus seven rebounds. He's with Doris. Kobe, how much of the difference in your team is tactical adjustments versus attitudinal adjustments? Oh, yeah, it's a little bit of both. You know, they play extremely well. They play with a lot of effort in the last two home games, and you know, it's important for us to do the same. Ron Artest looks like a completely different basketball player. Why? Well, yeah, you know, with him, it's such a rhythm thing. You know, he's uh, sometimes he thinks a little too much, throws his game off. You know, instead of just coming out and just playing. It's never a rhythm thing with this guy. He's always got it, Mike. He certainly did in the first half, Doris, but he had some help. Ron Artest's in double figures with 10. Pau Gasol also with seven points, eight rebounds, and five assists. As we'll have the T-Mobile halftime report coming up after the break with Stewart, Magic, John, and Michael. We'll analyze the first half and some all-access during these NBA Finals. As the Lakers trying to make sure these finals go to a seventh game. First half, they're off to a good start, including out-rebounding the Boston Celtics by an incredible 30-13. to 13. And the bench outscoring the Celtics bench 15-0. Halftime of game six, Lakers by 20. The Chinese Theater in Los Angeles as we welcome you back. Halftime of game six from the Staples Center. The Lakers with such an impressive performance, 51-31. They're well represented Hollywood. Glenn Fry, always here. Christine Aguilera, who sang the national anthem tonight. Legendary music producer Rick Rubin and Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And Diddy and Snoop Dogg, all here at the Staples Center. As we welcome you back to halftime, we're at the Diddy and Snoop Dogg of the broadcast. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Welcome back to halftime. Again, the Lakers, just unbelievable how they came out. You expected them to come out with such force, but just even more impressive than in many ways. And Kobe Bryant, as usual, led the way. He was, again, very efficient in, and economical in his shots. Six for 12 from the field. More paint shots than he's had in a long time. And there's the Coors Light cold, hard look. Starts it out early. A little short 17 action. He gets a little hand back and is able to get all the way to the rim, which we haven't seen. And then, sensing the mismatch over Rondo, hits the tough pull-up, and then, are you kidding me? Three, and then again, semi-transition, double clutch over Pierce, and then giving it up, not to get an assist, touches it to Gasol, rotation by Pierce. Gasol, who's an outstanding passer, hits Ron Artest right in his shooting pocket. And you look at this shot chart, and it tells the tale of Kobe Bryant living in the paint. Six of his 12 shots right at the basket area. And Bryant leading the way scoring-wise, but he had his help. And our Windows 7 winning combination is about his teammates and just the overall effort of the team. So what you don't want to do as a head coach in this league is force to, to, to coach energy, effort, and passion. That's the difference with the Lakers. You're talking about all-out hustle. Jordan Farmer hits the deck. Loose ball, keeps it alive for Bryant. How about extra effort plays? Again, Derek Fisher selling out his body. Hustle play again. Jump ball with Fisher and Garnett because of the energy effort. And how about this one? How Gasol at half court as the ball is in the corner. Does not give up on the play. Sprints to the paint area, and look what I found. Lays it in because of his energy, his passion, and that will get you a game seven. Let's send it over to Doris Burke. 
Mike, Doc Rivers telling me that Kendrick Perkins, after injuring that right knee in the first period, is definitively out for the rest of the day. They will reevaluate him. Here is the injury that he suffered in the first quarter to that right knee. They will reevaluate him for a game seven. As it relates to strategic adjustments, he simply said, L.A. played harder. They seem to out-rebound us at a pace that we simply cannot win if they dominate the glass that way. Their ability to score the basketball prohibited them from getting into the running game. I don't think there was a thing he was pleased about, guys. No, rightfully so, Doris. And you saw in that replay, Perkins pointing to his knee right away. Again, it just breaks your heart. He just He's one of our favorite players because of how hard he plays all the time, doesn't worry about stats, just wants to win. And you hope that the injury is not that severe. Where he'll be able to at least play in a game seven if that's necessary. Pierce falls, gets back up. Rondo struggling with his dribble. And a foul on Fisher. Fisher can't believe it. That's four fouls in nine minutes. Like very, very interesting as we take a look at what the Celtics have done all night long, really. Ray Allen started off on fire, but nobody has carried them on the offensive end. These three guys, the rest of the team, one for 14 from the field. Interestingly enough, Dockerman decides to go with Glenn Davis starting this half. You talk about the size of Gasol and Bynum. They ought to love that match. It's the exact opposite a lot of the numbers from game five. Ray Allen can't get it to go. Davis trying to keep it alive, nearly does. Remember the Celtics shot 56% from the field in game five. And here tonight, 33%. Instead of the top, Lakers are a much different team as Bryant draws the foul. They're just a different team here at the Staples Center. Phil Jackson, that's what he said after the game five loss. One of the ways they kept it positive for them in the locker room. Hey, we're going home. That's where we're at our best. All we need to do is just win, win one game, and then we'll get a game seven again on our home floor. Artest tried to jam it in there. Ball deflected. Now, Laker fans are certainly aware of comebacks. Nice pass inside. Davis misses the layup. Back out Allen. Of course, everybody remembers game four of the 2008 finals when the Celtics were down 24 in the first half, down 20 with six minutes to go in the third quarter, but came back and won game four of that finals, went up three to one and clinched it in Boston. So if there's any kind of run by the Celtics, certainly a lot of the fans will be thinking of those days. Lakers have continually said, though, they're a different team than 08. Tonight is their chance to prove it. Gasol off the mark, Pierce the rebound. Bad offense by the Lakers. Guys standing around right now as opposed to moving the basketball and having man move. Still basketball. When you're a coach, Jeff, and you're down, huge numbers like that at halftime, what's the message that you give them as they're coming out here to start the third? Well, I think what you're trying to do is chip away as Lamar Odom comes in early for Bynum. Chip away, try to work it down to a manageable number by the start of the fourth. 10, 11, 9, somewhere in there where you have a legitimate chance at winning the game. Mark at the other end for a team, you're up a huge number. The tendency so often is to relax as Rondo can't hit. Maybe with a rebound on the foul, but you'd hope nobody be relaxing in our finals game. You, you, what, what, what you realize is there are times when you have a big lead and guys all of a sudden get out of character and trying to do something they're not capable of doing or just thinking it's time to freestyle. No, it's time to continue to execute and prepare for what will work when it matters most. That foul on Gasol is first. Kevin Garnett now gets in his double team. Tough shot from Garnett. Hey, hey. Ball knocked out of bounds. He'll go the other way. But I like Glenn Davis's effort on the board. They got pounded as you see Andrew Bynum go back into the locker room. Well, right now we have Kobe Bryant and Glenn Davis talking to each other, challenging one another. If you're Glenn Davis. You better be careful. I'd go at Shannon Brown if I was Glenn Davis. <laughs> Bryant on the double team. Ryan had that hot start. Our test inside to Gasol. Gasol turn. Good double team from Pierce. And the Celtics force a turnover. Ray Allen goes right at Shannon Brown. Misses the layup. That's three missed layups by the Celtics already here.